Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you had a really great day trading today. So today was Thursday, July 25th. And for those of you that have been following me for a while, you know that I love volatility. My favorite volatility level is when VIX is around 25. Right now VIX is 18 and it was a really fun day. We did hit every single level that was in our implied move. And we did start the day flat we opened spy flat and our first move was down so we dropped down into this gap and that gap was from june where we did see cpi fomc and ppi and we did have that gap and then we ran it and then today we dropped back into that gap and you could see this long wick here so as soon as we dropped into that gap today we got pulled back up and we got back above the 50-day moving average we took it to the top of the implied move and just outside of the implied move was the 35 EMA. That 35 EMA was right there and it smacked us back down and smacked us all the way back into this gap. So our trading range today was $10 wide and we used almost the entire trading range. If you sold spreads on either end today, those paid really well. SPY did close down. 0.52%. VIX closed up 2.44% and we did close within the implied move today. The only time we came out of the implied move is when we got hit by that 35 EMA and then we went right back in. So we did close today back underneath the 50 day moving average. So far we're having a little bit of trouble holding that level and that 35 EMA is definitely acting as resistance still. So that was SPY, switching over to QQQ. We did open here with that same down move, and you could see that we made it all the way down to this gap as well, and we had that four hour 200 moving average right there. This gap right here goes back to right here where we saw the island bottom where this we had a down gap right here and an up gap right here so we had an island bottom and remember we were trading right between two islands so this island bottom and this island top and when we dropped into this island right here we closed out the bear gap part of it so the bull gap is still open and we did see that four hour 200 moving average right there so all of that together brought us back up and we got back into the green and we didn't get hit exactly by the 35 EMA but we did start to see weakness even before we reached that level and then we dropped back down so we did close in the red pretty deep down 1.1 percent VXN closed up 4.55 percent and we stayed completely within the implied move here and actually I take that back the drop that we had actually did drop us outside of the implied move, but that was the only time that we were out of it. And then we did come right back up. And for the rest of the day, we traded within the implied move. So that was QQQ switching over to SPX. We did open SPX flat and underneath the 50 day moving average. And I don't see anything too different from the SPY price action, but let's go over it again because it was absolutely beautiful today. We did drop, that was our first move. We got into this gap and this gap right here is back from where we saw CPI, FOMC and PPI. And we did see a pretty monster rally after that. And today we dropped back into that gap. And as soon as we got into that gap, we did see some buying. We got swung back up above the 50 day moving average. We took it all the way to the top of the implied move. And then that 35 EMA was right there, smacked us and brought us all the way back down to the gap. So 35 EMA was not messing around today. And it actually hit us pretty hard. SPX down 0.51%. VIX again up 2.44% and we did close within the implied move. And then let's take a look at IWM. I did not do a setup yesterday for IWM and I was not really tracking it today except for when I was like, wow, okay, look, IWM is green. So we did open right here in IWM. 
first candle was slightly above where we closed yesterday and then we did pop up pretty high we took it all the way to tuesday's highs right here and that is where we saw resistance and brought it back down to the 35 ema we are still consolidating here after that big move and we are above the 30 minute 200 moving average and underneath this long time bear gap back from 2021 so i would have to say that iwm is showing some impressive strength and I know I didn't do a setup for last night going into today, but in the second half of the video, I will set up tomorrow's implied move for IWM to close out the week. So that was IWM up 1.25%. The Russell Volatility Index, RVX, closed up 4.07% and we probably closed within the implied move here. Just looking at the price action, it's very likely that we closed within the implied move, even though I didn't do a reading from options last night. And then let's take a look at the Dow. We did open here. This again, I did not do a layout for last night, so I have to go back and look. Okay, our first candle is right here. On Wednesday, we did see that drop underneath the 30 minute 200 moving average. Today, we did come back up, back above the 35 EMA, and then towards the end of the day, we dropped and lost both of those levels. So if I take out price completely here, you could see that the 35 EMA is kind of closing in on the 30 minute 200 moving average. And if the 35 EMA crosses underneath the 30 minute, then that would be a very bearish signal. We do have an opportunity since it is still above to bounce on that level. If we do see that 35 EMA bounce here, again, we're not looking at price at all. We're looking at the moving averages. As long as this 35 EMA stays above the 30 minute 200 moving average, then we will probably resume being bullish. But if it does cross back under, then we will likely see a bit of a pullback here. And just a reminder that this range right here, DIA only has weekly options. And this is the options reading I did over the weekend for this week. And we are definitely still trading within the implied move. Let's put price back in. DIA closed up 0.21% and we did trade within the implied move. And remember, this is the weekly implied move. All right, so really, really fun day. We do have a bit of economic data tomorrow. We have PCE and core PCE in pre-market. We also have personal income, personal spending, and consumer sentiment. Let's go check out tomorrow's levels. Alright guys, so before we head into tomorrow's trading ranges, if you find these videos useful, if they help you to choose better strikes and take better trades, and you love that I break it down every night, then please make sure to give this video a like, and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out when I do post new videos. Also, there is a thank you button underneath the video, and that is a really easy way to show appreciation. For me taking the time to make these videos and also leave me a comment if you have any questions at all ask away in the comments i do get back to every single comment so starting in spy tomorrow's implied move is between 532 and 544 and that is from options and the 30-day average volatility is the same for tomorrow, 532 to 544. And then the implied move on Monday's contract is between 530 and 546. And to the upside, the first level to look for, if we do open up, is going to be this 50-day moving average. So far this week, once we dropped underneath it, we did close Wednesday underneath the 50-day moving average. And we also closed today underneath the 50-day moving average. So even though we were able to get above it, we did ultimately end up closing underneath that level. So 50-day moving average, and that is right underneath the top of the implied move at 544. Then we also have the 35 EMA, and today that gave us a good smackdown back into the implied move once we got up there that level is right at the top of the trading range 
and then the top of the implied move on Monday's contract is 546. And then to the downside, we do have a little bit of this gap left over from the CPOMC PPI gap right here. And we did close out about 80% of that today. We had about 20% open and the bottom of that is at 536.85. So just under 537, if this does not hold as support, then watch out below. We don't have a whole lot of support underneath there. And so 532 would be the next level to look for if we do break 537. And underneath all of that, we have the four hour 200 moving average and the bottom of the implied move on Monday's contract is 530. So a very similar trading range to what we saw today. We do have a major moving average to the upside. That is the 50 day moving average. And then we also have another major one, the four hour 200 moving average underneath. And then right in the middle, we do have a possible support. We did see selling at that level. Sorry, we did see buying at that level today. That long wick, as soon as we got into the gap, we got scooped back up, but then ultimately we did close back at that level. So it looks like a fun day. And then switching over to QQQ, the implied move over here is between 451 and 465 and that is from options and the 30-day average volatility is a few dollars wider 448 to 469 and then the implied move on monday's contract is between 448 and 468 and this trading range looks deceptively small it is definitely not small it is 1.44 percent based on the implied move and then 2.09 percent that's a 30 day average volatility. So I was just looking at it and it looks really small. It's definitely not. And to the upside, the first level to look for is that 35 EMA. That 35 EMA does define the trend that we're in, the direction that we're in. So you could see that it has been a pretty steady resistance every time we come up to that level. So if we get above the 35 EMA and see it as a support and with some follow through, that is a big deal, but right now 35 EMA is our resistance. 465 top of the implied move, 468 top of Monday's implied move. And then to the downside, we do have the rest of that island gap and the four hour 200 moving average. Those two levels are running together. And today when we dropped into that gap, we filled the bear gap and bounced. So right there, that four hour 200 moving average with what's left of that gap could definitely be a support level. It's definitely on my radar. If we drop underneath that, bottom of the implied move is at 461. 468 is the bottom of the implied move on Monday's contract. And then we have this dashed line right here that is underneath our trading ranges for the next two days. And we do have a support level right here. This goes back to the end of May, and then from there we bounced, we got back above the 35 EMA, I mean back above the 30 minute 200 moving average right here, this blue line, and then we really took off and we had a pretty wild ride to the upside. And that is right underneath our trading range for the next two days, that's the next level out. And that is around 443, just a little bit above that. So that is QQQ and over to SPX. The implied move over here is between 53.40 and 54.55. That is from options. And the implied move on Monday's contract is 53.25 to 54.75. And to the upside, that 50 day moving average. Again, we did close on Wednesday underneath the 50 day moving average. Then when we came back up, we got hit by that 35 EMA and we again closed underneath the 50 day moving average. So ever since we got underneath it, we have closed underneath it. So 50 day moving average is the first level to look for. Second level would be the 35 EMA. It is coming down. So once we start trading tomorrow, once markets open, We'll see that 35 EMA get closer to the top of the implied move, which is at 54.55, possibly capping off our day at around those levels. But maybe not. We might get above the 35 EMA, 
54.75 is the top of the implied move for Monday's contract. Underneath us is that gap, which I didn't collapse down a little bit. We did fill about halfway today. That is the CPI FOMC PPI gap in June. And that was filled in about halfway. I think I just said that today. And then the bottom of that gap is 53.75. And underneath that, we have the bottom of the implied move at 53.40. If we do fill that up, I personally feel like this will act as a support if we get to it. But again, we have a lot of economic data coming out tomorrow. So it is possible we take it all the way down to the bottom of the implied move. And then 53.25 is Mondays. Underneath all of that, four hour 200 moving average, that is a huge level. We haven't seen that level in a while. That is underneath both Friday and Monday's implied move. And then above us, we have that 50 day moving average. So two really powerful moving averages and we're trading right in between them tomorrow. All right. And then IWM, the implied move over here tomorrow is between 216 and 244. That is from options and that is a 1.87% move. Volatility is definitely still elevated in small caps. We are at 26 over here. And then the implied move on Monday's contract is between 215 and 226. And to the upside, we do have where we saw resistance today, and that's where we also saw resistance on Tuesday. And that is also where we saw resistance last Thursday. So right here, and let me just put a little line right there. That is 223.92. So let's call that 224. That is our first resistance level. I have the top of the implied move at 224. It's actually 224.60. So I'm going to go ahead and change that to 245. And so that is the top of the implied move. And then the top of the implied move on Monday's contract is 226. And above that, we do have this bear gap. I'm actually going to go ahead and zoom out. That goes back to right here. That is November 22nd of 2021. We gap down. I'm actually going to take that to the one year time frame and actually show where that gap was. That was right here to right here. And after that, we had that massive drawdown of 2022. And then when we saw that gap the other day right here, we didn't even get into the gap at all before we started seeing selling. So that is a known sell level right there. Let me zoom back in. So that is at just under 227 by a few pennies. So bear gap above our trading ranges tomorrow. And then to the downside, we do have a support right here. We did see a little bounce that is uh, just under 218. Bottom of the implied move for tomorrow is 216. And we also have the 30 minute 200 moving average at the bottom of the implied move waiting to catch it all if we do drop. So that is IWM's trading range and then DIA. The trading range for tomorrow, which we are using the 30 day average volatility because DIA only has weekly options. So let's start with the implied move for the week, which I did a reading on over the weekend. The implied move is between 396 and 410 and then for tomorrow, the 30 day average volatility is between 394 and 405. And to the upside, we have the 30 minute 200 moving average. This level definitely has defined our rally here. We did get above that in June. And once that 35 EMA got above the 30 minute 200 moving average, we saw that level as support right there. So we did close the last two days underneath that level. So if we swing back up to the 30 minute 200 moving average, and if it acts as a resistance, then we will get that 35 EMA cross down and that will be our bearish signal. So if we do come up to that level and it is resistance, 
then look down but if we do get above it then the top of the trading range for tomorrow is 405 and we did see a little resistance just short of that at 403.67 and then to the downside if we do drop a little bit then we do have this gap right here this up gap goes back to Thursday July 11th and it was the first of a couple down gaps and we did fill this one and this one and we just have this one left over bottom of that gap is at 397.48 we did see a bounce right at that level today and then just underneath that we do have the one hour 200 moving average ready to catch it all if we drop and take us into the weekend so that is dia all of the trading ranges look really fun for tomorrow i'm really excited that we have volatility back make sure you guys take profits often because volatility can rip options apart so have fun tomorrow trade safe make sure you take profits when you're up and i'll see you guys on sunday night